<laughs> Praise God. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. And, um, and it's good to see everybody that's here, here. You're who needs to be here. Amen? Um, I, I am a very, I'm a kind of person that likes people. I'm a people person. You probably guessed that. Ever since I walked in this church, I was giving, I, I didn't remember your names. I'd only been here one time, but my daughters would say, who's that? And I, said, and I, and I didn't know your name, so I'd give you a name. And, uh, and, but I told them, you probably better ask them their name because uh, I give them nicknames. Uh, that, that's the lady that likes to wear red. Uh, this is the lady that, you know, and, and that's how I was describing you. I'm, I'm never going to tell the brother, brother Joey, what we used to call him when we came to church the first time. Um, but, <laughs> but I thought his wife was his sister, not meaning that you're so old, brother, but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I just, I just thank God for being here in this church. God led me to this church, literally led me to this church. I told the pastors the story. I didn't want to go into any particular church. Uh, I'd been to so many churches since our pastor where we were passed away, and it was just a different thing. And uh, my kids, where are my kids? Oh, there they are. Okay, I got to make sure they're not out in the foyer somewhere. Okay. <laughs> um, so a lot of things have gone on in our lives, but we're so glad that we landed here. Amen. Can you say amen? Aren't you glad you landed here this morning? It's good to land in a house where you feel the presence of God, where you know something is going on and you're going to be a part of that. Amen. You know, my, my daughter often tells me, uh, how many were, well, not many of you were at the river walk last Sunday, right? When we did the, they did that, uh, what did they call that? Spirit Fest. How many went to the Spirit Fest? I know, just three of you. But, um, and, and some over there, some of the family. But if you went to the River Walk, you will know that I am a people person. I talk to everybody. I, I praise the Lord. It doesn't matter where I am. It's just, it's just who I am. There's people that, that are more quiet, like my daughter, um, and we can go to a drive through McDonald's, and, and we're going through the drive through and I'm say, joking with the person on the, we can't see her, we're joking at the speaker, and, and she'll say, Mother. And I'll say, what? Don't. <laughs> okay, so I quit joking until we get up front. Then I joke when they're going to give me the money. And she says, Mother. So, you know, my kids know that I'm a people person. They don't often like it, but, you know, sometimes... I, I get quiet, and sometimes I still do what I'm going to do. But, you know, when you're going to talk to somebody about Jesus, you can't just walk in, uh, meet somebody, and say, well, I want to introduce you to Jesus. You can, but it's better to have a, a different kind of rapport. Get to know them a little bit. Talk to them. Uh, maybe laugh with them, and, and then give them Jesus. Amen? That's a good thing. Praise God. You know, Jesus loved people, too. In his uh, three years of earthly ministry, he showed that in different ways, by healing people, by speaking to people, by the many miracles that we saw. And although he did all that, we really can't call Jesus a social butterfly. That's what I am. I need more color, but I am a social butterfly. You know, and, and Jesus, well, he was out there, but he seemed more of an outsider than he did an insider. And that's why the message I've entitled this morning is called Relationships matter. Relationships matter. Jesus loved the people. But, you know, I'm going to tell you a story, but before we do that, I want to set the stage a little bit for that story. It's going to take place in Nazareth. Jesus went back to visit his, his country with the disciples, and, and they went to synagogue. That's what they used to do on a Saturday. They go to synagogue. <laughs> Synagogue to us is a, to me, and maybe to many of you, is a big building with all its flashiness and holiness and, and reverence. And on, not to me, that's what that is. But in those days, the synagogue was in Jerusalem. So all these little cities that were around and too far to have a synagogue and not had the money to make a synagogue, they would build something small and that was their synagogue. It was synagogue simply means a meeting place. A meeting place. 
So they made a meeting place, and they'd find the highest hill in the city. And up on that high hill, they would build a synagogue because they didn't want anything that was that holy to be looked down upon. Does that make sense? So they built it on a city, on a hill in the city. You know, Jesus was there at the time, and his compassion for people, he loved his mother and father. You do, don't you? Most of you. You know, uh, you love your parents, grandparents. Um, and he was back in his own town. He was feeling, you know, his heart. He was happy. He, it was good. He was back home. The problem with being back home is sometimes they know you better than anybody else. Can you say amen? Come on. And, and Jesus was out there visiting, and they, they uh, came upon him and, and he upon the city. And when he got there, he walked in and they asked him to be the speaker, the distinguished speaker of that day, because he wasn't there often. So he, he obliged. He got in there and got up there on the, on the uh, they also would build in the middle of the synagogue, they would build a stone chair, a chair made out of stone, and it was called Moses' chair. And, and that was to where the speaker sat. And from that chair, he would speak whatever scroll was given to him. He, they didn't get to pick, pick their scroll. So they had to wait till whoever did that would go to the very back of the synagogue into a chest or a closet covered with linen were the sacred scrolls, which was called Torah, the Torah. And they'd, get, they'd pick any scroll from there and bring it out. It just so happened that on that day that Jesus was going to speak, the, the person that went, ran out to get the Torah brought him the Torah that was a, the sacred scroll of the story and the scripture of Isaiah. Now, Isaiah, that, that was before Jesus' time. But in Isaiah, the prophet had spoken about Jesus. And later in chapter 61, I, I want you to read that later, okay? I'm going to give you a, a, a pet peeve of mine. Is when I'm speaking, this is probably comes from teaching school so many years, I want you to look at me, okay? So when, when I'm speaking, I don't want you to be looking in your Bible or writing in a book or, or taking, I know you could take a few notes and then look up, so do that quick, or, or in your phones, and if there's kids here with your phones on and you're, you're in Angry Birds or in, in some kind of thing you're doing, turn it off. Because I've got spies in here that are looking to see if your phones are on the scripture or on a, on a, on a game. Okay, so when I look up, I'll take down my glasses like this because I'm checking you out. And so I want to make sure you're looking at me. Okay, because this very, the word of God is so important. And oftentimes we're so busy, we read something in scripture and then we stay in the scripture and pastors up here giving it to us or, or the other ministers really preaching something they have studied for and you have no idea. You're in another world on Angry Bird. Or in Tic-Tac-Toe. Well, I'm not, I am, but uh, on other games, you're busy. God doesn't want us to be busy, folks. He wants us to be ready with our ears open and our eyes open, our hearts open, ready to receive the word he has for you. Many times you come to church and you walk out of here still disgusted with yourself, still feel unrepented because you haven't been here for the right reasons, and that's to listen to the word of God. Can you say amen? Oh, saints of God, we're going to get ready. I can see you're with me. You're with me. And I'm going to ask you to open your Bibles to the book of Luke. Now you may look at your Bible. <laughs> I can't help it. I was a teacher. Okay. In, in, the, in the fourth chapter of Luke, you know, Luke was a doctor. For those of you that aren't, aren't really studying a lot about that, I know that some people don't know Luke was a doctor. He wrote the book of, of Luke as well as the book of Acts. Although... He was not a Jew. He was a Gentile. Now, all the books that were written in the Bible were written by Gentiles, except for a couple of them. 
that they didn't know who had written them. But they knew those two books were written by a Gentile. You and I are, guess what? No Mexicans. No, <laughs> I'm just teasing. Gentiles, you're right, you're right. Written by Gentiles. And so he had a whole different aspect of how he was writing this story that we're about to see. He had a whole different outlook. Dr. Luke looked at this and he put things in there that Matthew and Mark didn't put. They didn't add this. So I want you to remember to look at this and then John's important, but skip over John and look at, look at the book of Acts and you'll see how it comes together. Okay. In the cha fourth chapter, we're going to read, read us. Uh, let's start with the 14th verse. Then Jesus returned in the power of the spirit to Galilee and news of him went uh, out through all the surrounding region and he taught in their synagogues being glorified by everybody liked it glorified by all so then in verse 16 so he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up and was his custom he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read they chose him to read verse 17 and he was handed the book of the prophet who Isaiah. He was handed the book. He didn't go pick it out of the, the chest or the closet. He was handed the book of Isaiah. He found the place where it was written. And let's read. You can look down. You have permission to look down and look at, at verse 18. I'm, I'm reading, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, he says, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who were oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. They had no idea who was reading that text. It was just to them. It was just Jesus. For when you go a little bit further down, when you get to, let's see, verse 22, right before that, Jesus closes the book in verse 20 and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him. They were staring at him. And he began to say to them, the scripture today is fulfilled. It flew right over them. What he said flew right up. They didn't even, they had no idea. Because how, how could he be saying he's Lord when he's Joseph's kid? He's Mary's son. And, and they had this concept. But see, before they even said that, Jesus already knew what was going on in their head. So see, honey, God already knows you before you know yourself. He already knows you're kind of crazy. He already knows you're kind of stubborn. He already knows that you're the, you are, uh, you want to be pessimistic about everything. You never have anything good to say. Am I stepping on any toes? I'm not sorry. Okay, so then you, you go a little bit further and, and it says that when he, when, he realized that they were, he, he knew, Jesus knew. He said, you will surely say this proverb to me. Physician, heal yourself. Whatever we have heard done in Capernaum, do also in your country. And then Jesus said, assuredly, I say to you, no prophet is accepted in his own country. But I tell you, and then in those next verses, he tells, my head's up, everybody look over here. So then he, what he told them in the next few verses was explaining to them that he couldn't minister even to some of the Jewish Israelites. They weren't listening to him because when, even when Elijah came, showed up, an old time prophet, he went to Sidon, to Syria. And when the famine had come upon Israel, instead of going to Israel and saying, you will be fed manna from heaven or whatever he, wanted, he was going to say, God wanted him to say, they didn't even want to hear it. He went to an old widow woman and she was never hungry. Then Elijah, Elisha comes along and he too 
Verse 27 says, Elisha the prophet, and none of them, none of them that were there was cleansed from any sicknesses or disease except Naaman. Naaman the Syrian. Sometimes God wants to come to you. To you. Whatever you look like. Whoever you are. God is speaking to you. But some of us refuse to listen. We have our own thought. We have our own mind. We have our own attitude. Come on now. And even if he wanted to speak to us using one of the ministry here, we're not ready. So we're in the same, same sluggish route we've been walking. We walk with our head bent. How do you know people are sad anyway? They walk with their head bent. You look at them and they don't smile. They just have a certain way of walking. Right? But when somebody receives something and is happy, their head is up, they got a big pile of smile, and they're walking around like they, something just happened to them that was good. They had found the answer to whatever their problem had been. And Jesus wants to give you an answer. Whatever problem you have, whatever question you have, Jesus is the answer. Can you say amen? Come on, give him the glory. You know, Jesus came not to show the skeptic that he was the Messiah. He didn't perform miracles just because they wanted to. That's why they didn't like him. Jesus didn't do that because his friends were saying, huh, wait a minute. He was, he was Joseph's son. I mean, he played, he played football with the kids here in the dirt, kicking up the dust. He played kickball. He, well, not those things, but you know what I get. Well, you get the drift, right? He was playing with the kids, growing up with all the kids that were there. Probably some of the mothers used to whack, whack him on the side of the head and tell him, go home, it's late. You know, and, and he was just a kid growing up. So to them, he was nothing. He was just a kid. But when they saw what he was saying, some of it had gone over their heads. And other parts they listened to and they didn't like. See, they were Jews. So when they realized that he was healing Syrians and, and he was speaking to the unspeakable, come on. Because I'll tell you, there's some people today that we won't speak with everybody. I'll speak to you. And I'll speak to you too. I, I don't know about that here. I, I won't speak to you. You see, we tend to do whatever our little hearts want to do. Not under the anointing of God or the Holy Spirit. But because we want to do it because of who we are. We have not given everything to God. He wants a relationship with you. It's not enough that you just read your Bible. It's not enough that, oh, I didn't bring my phone. You know those little scriptures come out on your phone that tell you, hey, you got to read the scripture today. It even does that Catholic bing, bong, bong. So, so you know it's time for church. And you, you got to turn to that scripture to read it. Th those are okay. You know, you know, Sister Marnie, you and I do that. We, we read those, and it, it reminds us, and it's okay. But there are other things that our spirit is longing for that a little scripture on a phone cannot supply. Can you say amen? I don't know how many of you using a phone for your Bible can say, oh, when I feel bad and when I get sick, I just get that phone and I go. <laughs> ¿Qué pasó con tu Bible? What happened to your Bible? You know, you probably saw this big old Bible. I, oh, I've got so many Bibles you wouldn't believe. But, you know, when, when I'm sick or afflicted or, or I'm feeling lonely or whatever, whatever's going on, I don't grab my phone and throw it on my chest. I grab this hulk of a Bible and say, the word of God is upon me. And it really is. 
And I begin to feel loosened from whatever grip the enemy's trying to get me down. He will never finish trying to work on you. The enemy will always try to work on you and to get the best of you. But if you got the word, honey, and if you got it in your heart, honey, and you're reading it, and you're absorbing it, and you're laying it on your chest, and you're saying, Father, I need you. He's going to answer. He's going to answer. Can you say amen? amen? I know some people don't have a big old brick and mortar Bible this size. I realize that. They're a little heavy. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, Brother Ben. Where's your Bible, Brother Ben? Lift it up. Lift it high. Hi, Brother. Hi. See how tiny that is? <laughs> I don't know, Brother. No, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what size your word is. But it's good to have it at home. Even if you don't use it at church, but you got it somewhere, I suggest to you, you have a real Bible. Nothing against how Bibles come in those little phone things, the apps and everything like that. I, I use those too. But when I need something more, here's where I go. Well, listen to this. After they listened to him talk about how Elijah and Elisha blessed people that were not Jewish, the Jews got kind of upset. Their hair stood up, kind of like mine. And they were pretty angry. Even Now, do, don't you even think that his, some of his family was there? Now, the women, they weren't allowed there, but... Some of the men, the cousins, the, the kids he ran the streets with uh, playing ball. Uh, don't you think they were there too? They were probably there. They didn't get that he was a Messiah because he was saying, I am he. I am he. But nobody cared. They didn't get it. So I want you to be real certain this morning that you get it. It doesn't work for me if you don't get it. You have to recognize Jesus Christ as the Messiah and the soon coming king. That's coming for a people that is without wrinkle and without spot. He's coming for a people that is pure. A church that is clean. A church that is holy. Can you say amen? He can't come for you if you're coming to church in Daisy Dukes. Come on. You know what Daisy Dukes are, don't you? Those little short, short, little short where they walk and then, you know, certain parts come out. He's not coming back for a church like that. Because there's a problem in here. And after that problem is fixed, then God calls you. I can accept you any way you want. And I'll tell you that, that there's some people this morning that you're saying, you're saying to yourself, oh, she's stepping on toes. You know, in Mexico, when I was in Mexico, they used to say, si le, si le queda el huarachi, póngeselo. If the shoe fits, honey, put it on. It might be a little tight because we're talking about something that you really are sensitive about. It might be a little hard to walk on because you've been busy with the Daisy Duke thing. Come on now. And it might be a little hard because you're, you're, you're starting to learn how to use those little tops up here so that your belly button ring can show. Come on now. Oh, my, my, my. The church as God has turned into something God never intended it to be. The Bible says that we are light in the darkness. The Bible says, and I believe it's in, I believe it's in, uh, let me see here, in Luke and Galatians. Now you're all quiet. <laughs> okay, I will. <laughs> well, I wrote it down here somewhere, but I, I, was, I was telling the kids at home, they heard me hollering, and then they looked at me, and I said, it's okay, I'm just studying. <laughs> you know? But we look at, at Scripture, and anyway, it talks about, I was trying to find the exact Scripture, so you'll know that I'm not lying. Okay, 1 Peter 
229. Don't look for it, just write it down. Keep your eyes over here. Okay? First Peter 2.9 says, We are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. Hello? We don't look like a royal priesthood when we walk around looking like somebody just dragged us out of the goodwill. Come on. Oh, my. If the shoe fits, honey, put it on. But you go on and, and it goes on. The scripture goes on and it says, We are a royal priesthood called us from darkness ah, into his marvelous light. We're no longer in the darkness. Can you say amen? But I'm going to finish right here. Calm down. Okay. So then in verse 29, after they were upset, it says, And they rose up and thrust Jesus out of the city. They led him to the brow of the hill, to the brow of the hill on which their city was built, and they, so that they might throw him down the cliff. Okay, some of you want to throw me down the cliff. I understand that. Because some people don't like to hear the word. Some like the candy-coated stuff. Ooh, come on. Some like it not quite this hard. Ask my kids. Like I am here, I am home. My daughter often tells me, Mother, control yourself. Because <laughs> I've got that music going that, what's the name of that song, baby? Do in the morning, do in the morning, come and rest upon my heart. Do in the morning, and I'm just like this. That's why I don't cook much. Most of my stuff is, is in the microwave. <laughs> or it's pizza. <laughs> but I bring you on back. I bring you on back. We have to be, they were trying to kill Jesus because they didn't like what he had to say. They didn't like what he was doing. He didn't perform miracles there, so hey, go on your way. But they didn't send him go on the way. They wanted to finish him off. But people, relationships are important. We have to have a relationship with Jesus Christ so intense that it makes us want to be in the house of God. I can't park my Jeep fast enough to get into the parking lot. Ask Brother Well, he's not here this morning, is he? I cut right in front of him. <laughs> I cut right in front of him and I parked and then he says, What were you doing, sister? <laughs> I said, I'm sorry, brother. I, I didn't realize that you were part of the church and and I was, you know, I'm really sorry, brother. <laughs> oh, no, no, and truly, I was sorry. Sometimes. <laughs> but we go on and we see that how the, the things today, oh, my. We have to be first because if we're not and things are changing, how are we going to change? We don't. We don't know how. But if we're serving God, God will show, show us what step to take next. Amen? God will show us what we have to do next. We don't have to worry. Did you hear me, saints of God? We don't have to worry. When you are being a father and a mother and a grandparent and you're telling your children to do a certain thing, you have to do it. Why? Because I'm the mother. My kids, just, I think it was just yesterday or the day before, I was taking my, older, my, my daughter, Heaven, to work at McDonald's. By the way, guys, she works at McDonald's or on Highway 50, and, and tw I, I, 25 and Highway 50. Go visit her. Give her a hard time. Order a bunch of things and then say you don't have the money. <laughs> well, I went to go pick her up one night, and my son was in the back seat. And we were coming home, and, and we were talking, and heaven says, I'm not going to church. And I said, yes, you are, and I'm just driving. I said, I'm not going to church. And I mean, she's all flustered, and I'm just driving. I said, yes, you are. And she said, you don't understand. 
I am not. I am tired. I am, I am just got out of school. I don't feel good. Look, look, I don't feel good. Look, ah, 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 see, I don't feel good. I'm not going. And I said, yes, you are. We kept driving. And she said, why? And I say, because I'm the mother and I'm driving. <laughs> and she said, but why? And I said, I'm the mother. And my son in the back seat caught on. So every time she'd say, I don't know why you forced church on me. And he says, she's the mother. <laughs> Thank God somebody was with me. <laughs> well, I don't want to be there long. It's only an hour, honey. Yeah, but you start talking and everything, and, 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 and then I don't know why, and my bird in the back, because she's the mother. <laughs> Saints of God, yeah. when you get behind the cross of Calvary, you can be the mother you were intended to be in the Christian things of God, not the mother that says, wear whatever you want, I'm not going to fight with you. Uh -uh. You're going to wear what is right and something that is covering you and then you're going to go to church with me anyway. Now you might say, oh, she's just saying that with these last two. No, Miranda's been raised like that. My other kids were all raised like that and I got a nephew back there that they were raised like that. Why? Relationships matter. Your relationship with Christ should be the first place in your life on, Wednesday, on Tuesdays, you should say, oh, I got to get to Bible study. You know what I do? I, I've got so many things I have to do that I just say, let's order pizza. And the kids are all like, yay, and we don't have to go to church. <laughs> and that's cool. Yeah. But I want to be there. My heart longs to be in that seat, praying and seeking God. And then grouping together with the ministers and those that came to pray, the prayer warriors, we get together and we pray and we pray and we don't get tired. We do not get tired, honey. So if you don't like to pray, just stay home because we're going to pray and we're going to seek God and we are not turning off any lights or locking any doors until the power of God has spoken to us and we have gotten what we need to get. Can you say amen? amen. Oh my gosh. I know there's a lot of new things. I know there's a lot of new fashions. I know that a lot of things have changed. I know I've got teenagers. They show me these things that change. You remember when, when all the text was so easy to text? Now they got letters. They just put a lot of letters in, and that's, that's what they're talking about. Well, I tried to do that, and, and I caught on with uh, LOL means laugh out loud. Okay, clap for me. Thank you. Thank you. And then I knew what TTYL meant, too. Talk to you later. <laughs> and then I thought I knew what WF, WTF meant. Okay, don't say it, don't say it. I thought I knew what it meant. So when a Christian friend on my Facebook asked me something, and I says, <laughs> oh my. I thought it meant walk the faith. <laughs> so I put on there, sister, don't worry, you just walk the faith. WTF. <laughs> well, it didn't mean that. Not at all. It was way at the other side of what I was trying to say. So I decided I wasn't going to be doing those letter things. If I can't write it in, other than LOL, it's not happening. <laughs> so see, it's hard for us as older people. We were raised in a whole different generation. We understand you guys. We understand that you want to wear the Daisy Dukes. We understand that you want the little uh, chop tops. We understand that you like the phones to come to church and play. We understand all that. But we're women of God and we're under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And it's telling me we need to tell our people. We need to tell our children like it is. And not play games and say, it's okay. People just don't understand it. It's okay to stand in the foyer and talk and play. It's okay. It's not okay. We need to be in the house of God, seeking the, the face of God so that our lives can be transformed. Can you say amen? Can you say amen? 
We need to know that the relationship with Jesus Christ starts with us, mother and daddy, grandma and grandpa, uncle and auntie. We have to be living that word because if we're not doing that word and we're using the Daisy Dukes too, there's going to be a major problem, especially when the, major, the, the Daisy Dukes on our older women and, you know, parts hang a little lower than other parts, you know. And it's just not a good thing. It doesn't go together. If it doesn't go together in the natural, it's not going to go together in the spiritual. Come on. God's speaking to us. He's saying, get the relationship right. Get your relationship right. Maybe some of you don't have kids anymore. At my age, I shouldn't have, but I do. And they've taught me a lot. We go through things. Sometimes the battle's all uphill. And I feel like the next, the next step, Lord, I can't do it without you. He told me some things to do. And I've noticed that since I've done them, things have mellowed out. Because God is supreme. He knows what we need. He knows what our heart's aching for. He knows we want to be better than we were yesterday. He knows that we know we're not enough. He knows that we want a church that is for, more filled with the gospel. We want, we want a church that's more anointed. We want a, a God that comes and he sanctifies the whole place. You know, when we have prayer meeting nights, sometimes there's people that walk up and down these aisles, anointing the chairs, anointing the pews, anointing everything. But we, go, we want God for this service to come together on Sunday morning. We want to feel God and his anointing. Can you say amen? We're not good enough. We, it isn't good enough to just be in church. Anybody can be in church. But oh, to open your heart and say, Lord, you speak. Lord, this is your time. I'm going to be quiet. Now, I don't usually do that. But I'm going to be quiet and I'm going to let God speak. I'm going to allow God to do what he has to do. And you know, I, I'm going to close with this. Not only does God have to be first, he has to be the first stone, the first stepping stone that we take. Right now, we're having classes that are called next step, meaning after you've come here and you've accepted the Lord and you think that's all there is. No, we got more for you. If you accept the Lord today or you've accepted him the past few months and you're saying, that's all there is? No. We have a class that starts at 9 o'clock in a room called the MPR, and we're back there drinking coffee and donuts. <laughs> I told on you. <laughs> but we're doing that, but we're also having a class that the new believers, the new born-again people, are going to learn how to handle life, how to get better at life being a Christian. Because the devil will teach you how to be bad. He, that doesn't take anything. But it takes work to know how to be right. How to be on time. How to be in the place where God wants us to be when it's time. You know, there, I'm just going to make this one last point. See this beautiful cross? We know what it stands for, don't we? We know that he gave his life for us. And we have to be sure. We have to be certain in our talk and in our life that, that what we believe we're going to spread it and tell others. But as I look at more and more music on YouTube, and I look at more and more podcasts on YouTube that are Christian, they're all Christian. They don't have a cross. None of them. The only one that had a cross was, was um, McAllister, Judith McAllister that sings that song. What's that song, Hita? <laughs> Do in the morning. <laughs> she told me one day, would you quit putting that song I, I'm walking out of here doing something. And I'm saying, do in the morning. Come and rest upon my heart. And she's, she's folding the laundry. Do in the morning. And I didn't say nothing, but I'm saying, yes, Lord. You know, my son's got the headsets on, so he can't hear nothing but the computer. And I tell him something, he moves one headset aside. And in his brain, the same song is going because it's repetitious. I got it going all Sunday morning. And if they're lucky, I'll give them a break during the week. <laughs> you know? But I got it on my phone, and, I can't, and it's, it's on one of those that keeps going over and over. 
and it plays and it plays and it plays. And if I, I burned the macaroni the other day, I will admit. Because the do of the morning was going on and I, I just I just said do of the morning and then I smelled smoke. And uh, the macaroni was burned, so no big deal. There weren't any more, but I made something else. No big deal. But you know, that's what we have to do. We have to get so caught up in the things of God that the things of the world mean nothing anymore. We got the state fair going on. I love the state fair. All the things that happen, I love the lights. I especially love the candy and the food and the cotton candy and all that. But we, we can go. It's okay. But we don't have to be caught up. To be caught up, it means you, you can't get to church on time because you're at the fair. Oh, my. You can't get to the church on time because you are doing something at the fair with somebody. We need to come to church. We need to put our Bibles and our books down and look at my eyes. We need a relationship with Jesus Christ. Anybody can have one, but not the kind I'm talking about, honey. This is an intense relationship with Jesus Christ. And now I'm going to ask those of you that don't know, the singers might be able to come back up if you like. You can play something. For those of you that don't know that you're here tonight, and maybe you just came because it was the right thing to do, or you didn't have nothing to do, or someone invited you and you wanted to come, and, but you really don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Today I invite you to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. You will never walk alone. When people walk alone and they get sad, they get in their cars, they shoot themselves, and they kill themselves. Why? They're lonely and they haven't filled that hole that God made especially for Jesus to fill. To fill. Nothing else is going to fill it. Just Him. No matter what you look for in this lifetime, sweetie, you're never going to find it. The answer is here. That hole there needs to have Jesus in it. And so I'm going to give you a chance this morning to make that commitment to Jesus. And some of you that maybe had a commitment at one time and just, just time and, and things and, and other things have come up and, and you've lost that place. You don't know if you're there or here. I want you to come up too. I want you to, yes, I'm going to call you to come up, chickens. Okay? You're going to come up. But we can't, we can't be hiding somewhere and say, well, I want to, Sister Paula. But you don't get up and I can't see your hand. You got to say, you know what? I need him. I need a savior. I want to change my life. I'm not giving him the things that I should. I've been shortchanging the son of God. And I want to make it right this morning. So I'm going to ask that you dim the lights just a little bit. Every eye closed. This is the time I'm going to ask you, don't look at me. Every eye closed. Think of what I'm telling you. You know you better than anybody else. I don't know you. God does. He recognizes where you're at. He knows where you stand with him. Sometimes there have been tears of frustration because you know you haven't done what you should have done. Tears of loneliness because you just don't feel like you can get close anymore to him. Maybe there's a sin or, or something in your life that is, is like sin that, that you can't do anything with. You're lonely, you're hurting, you're broken. Things happen in our lives, folks. Not nice things. But I want to make a commitment tonight to everyone that we, Agape Church, will be right here when you need us.